What did we learn from the Florida State Seminoles versus LSU Tigers game last night? Let's get into it. I'm gonna just go ahead and get this out of the way within the beginning of the video. Florida State are serious playoff contenders. Florida State was coming into this game coming off of a hot end to their 2022 season, and they brought over all of that steam right into the 2023 season and played a exceptional game. Florida State came into this game and dominated a fifth ranked LSU team on both sides of the ball all game. You know what, normally us college football fans, we're used to seeing at least two top 15 matchups for a week one of college football. However, this year we only got one, but this game lived up to the hype. All the way up until the third quarter, this was an extremely tight game. Both LSU and Florida State have some of the most ferocious defenses in all of college football, especially their defensive lines. But Florida State's defensive line is absolutely on a completely different level. But real quick, if you haven't already, be sure to leave this video a like, comment down below. I want to hear your guys' thoughts from the last night's LSU versus Florida State game. Were you guys rooting for LSU? Were you rooting for Florida State? What do you want to see your team improve on moving into next week? And hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications. LSU and Florida State are two teams we're going to be covering the entire football season. And you do not want to miss any of the breakdowns that we have. Guys, if you haven't already, go check out my, my TCU versus Colorado breakdown. You're not going to want to miss that. But now let's get into breaking down each individual team in this game. Starting off with LSU, there was one major difference between LSU and Florida State in this game and that was the conditioning of their defensive line. Florida State had a full gas tank from the first quarter to the fourth quarter, keeping their foot down on the pedal the entire time. LSU got off to a fast start, but at the middle to end of the third quarter, that's when you could start to see that their defensive line was starting to unravel. In the first two quarters of this game, LSU was causing fits for Jordan Travis in that Florida State offense. They weren't able, Jordan Travis looked extremely flustered in the first two quarters. It's primarily the first quarter and then the first half of the second quarter looked completely flustered and lost out there. And LSU was doing a phenomenal job of just creating pressure on Jordan Travis, especially Makai Wingo, who is going to be a first round talent. Like that kid can flat out explode off the line and cause havoc in the backfield. He reminds me of a little Aaron Donald. But like I said a little bit earlier, LSU was doing such a phenomenal job of Florida State was not able to run the ball effectively at all in the first half of this game. Florida State was had their, had their spots here and there on the offensive side of the ball as far as their receiving game. Highly just thanks to Keon Coleman, which we will we will completely be spotlighting him here in a second. But LSU was doing a phenomenal job of keeping this game within arm's reach. They were not creating a whole lot of penalties for themselves. They were capitalizing on a lot of the things that Florida State was, was doing wrong. Overall, they were playing extremely well in this game. But LSU's defense kept this game manageable going into halftime, only allowing Florida State to score 14 points. LSU's offense actually started off to a very hot start. Again, Florida State, their defense was going crazy too but LSU did have the lead going into halftime with a 17 to 14 lead over Florida State primarily led just by the exceptional QB play by LSU Jaden Daniels went 22 for 37 throwing for 347 yards with one touchdown to one interception but then also had 15 carries for 64 yards Jaden Daniels was seriously a one-man show for the LSU Tigers offense. He led their team in rushing, and nobody else really helped him at all. Besides Jaden Daniels going out there and getting his own scramble yards, LSU's second leading rusher, Josh Williams, had only four carries for 44 yards, but 35 of those yards came on one play. If you took out that run, here's what LSU's rushers would have ran for. Josh Williams would have went four carries for nine yards. Noah Kane would have went four carries for four yards and one touchdown. And Trey Bradford would have went for four carries for one yard and one touchdown. When you take out that run, LSU's running backs averaged, they had 16 carries for an average of one yard per carry the entire game. Now, a large testament is to just how elite Florida State's defensive line is and how elite they played. But come on, you need to be able to average more than one yard. You cannot solely rely on your quarterback to be able to get you all of your rushing yards. Even though Jaden Daniels is a highly elite runner of the ball at QB. 
And in all honesty, when you look at Jaden Daniels' stat line, he had over 400 yards of total offense by himself. However, none of that matters because LSU was not able to score in the red zone at all. I mean, don't get me wrong. They did have one score in the red zone, but they had, I want to say, three or four separate tries where they got stalemated inside of the five by Florida State's defensive line and just Florida State's defense in general. LSU needs to be able to capitalize on their scores when they are in the red zone, and they simply were just outclassed. There's no other way to put it. Florida State outclassed LSU's offensive line in the red zone. Especially coming out of halftime, LSU was in a prime position to really pull away in this game. They had multiple opportunities to be able to score in the red zone. If they were just able to convert some of those plays and just get their running game going even a little bit, Jaden Daniels was gonna get you into the red zone, but when you cannot capitalize on it, all you're doing is just shooting yourself in the foot because you're just giving Florida State time after time after time again they know, hey, they can't score in the red zone. So, yeah, you throwing for 300, almost 350 yards, having almost 400 total yards of offense by yourself, that doesn't mean anything when you don't capitalize on it. And then the last thing that I want to talk about for LSU is just how quickly their team deteriorated in the, in the back half of the third and the entire fourth quarter. LSU looked defeated. As soon as they realized that Florida State was just smacking them in the mouth, Every single time they got into the red zone, boom, gets punched in the mouth. Florida State started to out physical players. Just things just were not going in LSU's favor. Once that defensive line started to tire out and Florida State was able to get their running game going, it was over. And there was no boost in morale. It was just simply LSU just rolled over and died. And you don't want to see that. You at least want to see a team competing from, from the beginning to the end. You just, hey, whatever you do, don't quit. It looked like in the back half of this game, LSU quit. And being the number five team in the country, not going to be that anymore. It, it'll be interesting to see how LSU recovers from this. Overall, my two biggest takeaways from this game for LSU and the things that they need to improve on going into next week. Number one, that defensive line needs more conditioning. You have a elite defensive line and you have a ton of players. I mean, you got Major Burns and Harold Perkins at, for your linebackers who can go out there and they can ball out. They can, they will help your defensive line. You need your defensive line to be able to go 100, 100% from start to finish. It's, it's as simple as that. You have the line to win. You need to have them in the in the key third and fourth or the key third and fourth quarter. That's simply what you need. And then on the offensive side of the ball, you need to be able to run the ball more effectively. You cannot rely on Jaden. I mean, you can rely on Jaden Daniels to go out there and just run and get you a bunch of yards. Is he going to be able to turn those yards into touchdowns when he gets you into the red zone? Are you going to be able to capitalize on those red zone visits in the touchdowns, or are you going to continuously get stalemated? LSU should have had over 40, 45, maybe even points in this game with just how many opportunities they had in the red zone. They were not able to capitalize on hardly any of those. LSU needs to be more efficient in the red zone and they need more conditioning for that defensive line. Don't get me wrong, this season's not over for LSU. I know that I know that this is a tough loss to watch. You still have one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC, and you have a ton of talent on that defensive side of the ball, and you have talented wide receivers for, on this team. First game of the season, there was a lot of drops on both sides of the ball. But once you clean up some of those errors, hey, LSU's still gonna be a very, very dominant team in this college football season. And now switching over to Florida State, this game was such a statement win for the Seminoles. Like I said in the beginning of this video, Florida State was coming off of a white hot end to their season, putting up over 35 points in their last six games of the season, and they walked right into this week one matchup and continued on every single thing that they were doing in last season. They brought all of that over and then some. Michigan State wide receiver transfer Keon Coleman is going to be the reason why Florida State is in the college football playoffs. Mark my word, that Jordan Travis to Keon Coleman connection is elite. But bigger than all of that, Florida State is terrifying on that defensive side of the ball, and they have one of the most explosive defensive lines in the entire country. Between Jared Verse, future top five pick in the NFL draft, Dennis Briggs Jr., and Joshua Farmer, 
Florida State has some dogs on that defensive line. And they're extremely deep on that defensive side of the ball. They're able to rotate guys in and out and not miss a beat. And that is why Florida State absolutely dominated this game from the defensive side of the ball. Like I said with LSU, they consistently stopped LSU in the red zone. They made it a living nightmare for, for LSU to move the ball in any meaningful way on the ground. Florida State won this game 45 to 24 in a very decisive fashion. As crazy as it sounds, this game, this game could have been a lot worse. The first half of this game, Florida State came out to a abysmally slow start to how they finished this game. Jordan Travis looked terrible in the first half. You had more drops than I think I've ever seen in one game. Like literally, Johnny Wilson, I love that kid. I've literally been following him since high school. He has bad cases of the drops, especially early on in games. It just seemed like everybody was dropping the ball except for Keon Coleman. And then you had seven penalties for 64 yards. And I want to say that all seven of those penalties were in the first half of this game. And even with all of those penalties, all of those miscues, just the, all the just slow and poor play by Florida State in the first half of this game, their defense was so elite that they still kept their team within three points going into halftime. And then from halftime on, Florida State kicked it into another gear and they found their true identity. Jordan Travis calmed down, found his guys, and played. I don't think I've ever seen Jordan Travis play this well before. Don't get me wrong, last games in last season, he was playing well, but he looked a lot calmer. He looked more confident. His footwork started to clean up. The footwork in the first, I don't even really want to even talk about the Jordan Travis in the first half. That pick that he threw was one of the worst, I, I thought that it was about to all unfold right there. I, I'm going to keep it real. That was one of the worst picks that I've seen. He literally just like, uh, just just threw the just threw a duck in the middle of the field and was just praying that the ball got picked. Like literally just terrible. Absolutely, absolutely terrible. But then he went and clicked it into high gear, found his confidence, found his connection with Keon Coleman, and he potentially has the, he could potentially be one of the best quarterbacks in the ACC. He went out there and played a phenomenal game. He went, he calmed his nerves down, he found his guys, he went through his progressions and really just helped lead Florida State on this massive comeback in the back half of this game. Jordan Travis in this game went 23 for 31, throwing for 342 yards with four touchdowns to only one interception and had seven carries for 38 yards and one touchdown. The same way that I said Jaden Daniels was a one-man offense for LSU, Jordan Travis was a two-man offense for Florida State, pairing him up with Michigan State transfer Keon Coleman. Keon Coleman has to be one of the most dynamic wide receivers in all of college football. This kid is on another level. Big body, physical wide receiver. I want to say he's 6'3", 220. At bare minimum, he's 210. Kid is a big physical wide receiver and he plays the game so smoothly. Like when you when you watch him out there, he looks like an NFL wide receiver. I love the fact that he transferred from Michigan State to Florida State. He's now in a much bigger market. He's gonna be playing in bigger games, boosting up his draft stock. Keep an eye out on Keon Coleman. He did that he might win the Bolitnikov this year. Like he went out there and balled out. On top of that, I know that I said Johnny Wilson had a bad case of the drops in this game, but the catches that he did make were huge catches. He had seven catches for 104 yards. And I want to say at bare minimum four of those catches, but I think it was five of those catches were for first downs. He was constantly moving the chains. If Johnny Wilson could just get consistent hands, that six foot seven frame is going to make him a dangerous weapon at the next level. He could very easily be one of those sneaky day, late day two, early day three guys. I mean, he's probably gonna be more of a solid day three wide receiver just because of how many drops he does have in his college career. But if he's able to fix those drops, he could be a very scary target in, at, in the NFL level. Again, six foot seven. The kid is a big body. He's pretty much just a tight end playing outside a wide receiver, but he has wide receiver moves. Florida State, but with Johnny Wilson and, and Keon Coleman, also pairing him up with Jaheim Bell, freak tight end transfer from South Carolina. Florida State's got the offense. They have the offense to go out there and ball out. On top of that, like I said, first half of this game, LSU was just stifling the run game. Like, 
Florida State was not, neither team was able to get anything on the ground going in the first half because both of these defensive lines were just playing completely out of their mind. But in the second half, that's when Florida State's running game really opened up. Their leading rusher, Trey Benson, had 12 carries for 47 yards. And then backups running backs, Rodney Hill had five carries for 29 yards. And Lawrence Toafili had six carries for 20 yards. Overall, Florida State looked exceptional on the back half of this game. Really, they just need to just get rid of those big mental errors. Stop with all the penalties and Jordan Travis, calm down earlier on in the game and don't put the ball into harm's way so much. I misspoke earlier. That player that he just kind of just jumped up and just threw the ball, just threw a floater into the middle of the field and prayed somebody was there, that was almost an interception. If number three for LSU didn't tip that ball, Harold Perkins was very easily coming down with that ball. It was that screen, it was that little wide receiver quick screen on the outside where he had a bunch of pressure in his face there was like four, there was like, there was two LSU wide receivers who were in his line in front of the wide receiver and he still threw that ball directly at the player. Like that's, that's bad. Don't like, again, this was a tale of two halves for Jordan Travis. First half, that was a, that was a wide, or that was a quarterback that you could even potentially consider benching. Back half, look like a Heisman candidate. Get, get rid of some of the very, just get rid of some of that variability, go out there, play more consistent ball again your defense is gonna carry you all jordan travis just get just find ways to get the ball into keon coleman's hands johnny wilson stop with the drops and just make all those key first downs get your running game started a little bit earlier on and then let your defense carry you florida state is a serious playoff contender hey hats off to mike norville because he went in there and has absolutely changed florida state they went from being just they they went from the high high of highs in the Jameis winston era and then just fell off they had a lot of quarterback troubles whether it was suspensions or injuries and just not really able to find that identity mike norville comes in there and he has set the record straight that he is taking florida state back to the promised land and i genuinely believe that florida state is going to be one of the best teams what i saw for that from that defense that defense could play up against any offense in college football and their offense has the firepower to match any other team's offense it, at bare minimum able, able to keep up i really was impressed with what i saw from florida state in this game so what did we learn from florida state versus lsu LSU has some major, major, major things that they need to fix in their red zone offense. They need to be able to convert more and their defensive line needs to be conditioned more. And Florida State, just don't lose the game. Just don't shoot yourself in the foot. Stop with all the penalties. Stop with the, the just the mental drops. Go out there, execute, get your running game started a little bit earlier. Jordan Travis, calm down. Florida State could go extremely far. This is a dark horse national championship winning team right here. I'm letting y'all know that right now. But I want to hear from all y'all. Comment down below. What are your thoughts from last night's Florida State versus LSU game? Be sure to leave this video a like. Hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications so you never miss any of the fire videos that we drop on the channel. Keeping you up to date with everything going on in college football. I love and appreciate all of y'all. Hope that you have a super blessed rest of your day. And I will catch you guys in the next video. Ciao.